I used to think that external SSDs really weren't worth the price that they were going for, but this new model by PNY has me thinking otherwise. Pretty much as long as I've had disposable income, I haven't really been impressed by the value proposition for external storage, whether it's solid state drives, hard drives, SD cards, or thumbsticks. External storage has pretty much always been more expensive per gigabyte compared to their internal storage counterparts. And also, unless you're using uh, Thunderbolt instead of USB, uh, you tend to have to sacrifice performance for the convenience of having that portability. And also, there are two other big reasons that I just haven't really been impressed by external storage. Firstly, with the ever-increasing size of hard drives and SSDs, I haven't really felt the need to go and pick up some external storage when I can just upgrade my internal storage. And also, it's really easy to take an internal storage device, like a regular uh, 2.5 or 3.5 inch hard drive or an NVMe SSD, M.2 SSD, what have you, and hook it up to some kind of USB adapter and make it an external storage device. For the past decade or so now, I've actually been using this old Sabrent USB to SATA adapter, and that's been really useful for all my whole old hard drives and SATA SSDs. Um, also, you could buy an NVMe to USB adapter for like 15 to $30. Because of that kind of stuff, I've just never been really compelled to buy a, a bespoke external SSD or hard drive or what have you. Like the amount that you can save by going DIY for external storage is really extreme. Sometimes to the point where like you can cut down the price by about 50%. But PNY's Pro Elite V3 has really shattered my expectations, pretty much just in respect to bang for buck. So we have the one terabyte model here, as you can see, one terabyte. Uh, this is $84 right now. Uh, that is a little bit higher than average if you look at all external uh, hard drives and SSDs. But where this really shines is actually the performance and the capacity combined. Now the bang for buck doesn't really come into play when we just focus on capacity. This is the one terabyte model. It's $84. It's a little bit more expensive on average compared to other external uh, hard drives and uh, solid state drives. And it's also more expensive than one terabyte internal storage devices, uh, mainly PCI 3.0 and 4.0 drives. However, everything else uh, for this drive is great value. And also this thing is really small. The form factor is incredibly tiny. This is what I would honestly call uh, a thumb drive if people still call things thumb drives. I don't know if I'm showing my age there or not, but back in like 2010, I would call this a thumb drive. Another thing you might notice about this if you've ever used external storage is that a lot of external storage devices, actually I'd probably say most at this point, require a separate cable that you plug into your storage device and then into your computer. But this actually just has the USB type C port coming straight out of it and it works just like, you know, an old school uh, USB thumb drive. You might be concerned uh, that maybe it'll cover up ports um, because it is so wide. But in my experience, at least on my computer, or my test bench, um, no, it, it, it leaves enough clearance. I don't know, maybe if you uh, put two of these next to each other, there might be a problem. But if you're just uh, putting this next to a normal uh, USB Type-C cable, there should be enough clearance. This didn't cover the USB Type-C port on the other side of it at all. So there should probably be enough clearance for most other USB Type-C devices. Now, with all that being said, let's finally talk about performance. We put PNY's new external SSD through the paces and tested it in four different benchmarks. Our testing platform of choice is our LGA 1700 test bench, which is equipped with the Core i9-1400K, ASRock Z790 Tai Chi Lite, and 32GB of DDR5 memory clocked at 5600MHz. The Pro Elite V3 was plugged into one of the board's Thunderbolt 4 ports, giving it the best possible performance, though this SSD is only running on USB 3.2, so Thunderbolt 4 is by no means required for optimal performance. We tested a few other external storage devices to compare against PNY's modern thumbstick. Two SD cards and one 2.5 inch SATA SSD hooked up to a SATA to USB adapter. Beginning with 3 d Mark storage benchmark, we see that the Pro Elite V3 has a pretty commanding lead over all the other drives here, two of which are actually a PNY SATA SSD and a PNY SD card. Though the lead over the SATA drive isn't nearly as big as over the SD cards, which we should expect since bona fide SSDs have big advantages in both the quality of the NAND and the controller. In our other gaming benchmark, Final Fantasy XIV's official Dawn Trail benchmark, we see pretty similar margins as in 3 d Mark, with the thumb drive in the lead, the SATA drive in a somewhat close second, and the SD cards barely in the running at all. 
Next up, we have Disk Bench, which we set up to transfer the Witcher 3 game folder from one location on a given device to another folder. This means that each drive had to read and write at the same time, which is never easy. Here, the PNY USB stick gains a pretty big lead over every other drive, including the SATA SSD. Now, 170 something megabytes per second is pretty slow compared to even a slow internal SSD, but in the world of external storage over regular USB, it's more than fast enough. Crystal Disk Mark is our final test, and while it is 100% synthetic, it does tell us lots about how storage performs under realistic conditions. We use the four default subtests, which differ in respect to sequential versus random workloads and queue depth. In the sequential test with a queue depth of one, we can begin to understand how this USB stick could be so much faster than the SATA SSD and disk bench. Sequential workloads are the kind of transfers involving big files, and The Witcher 3 uses lots of those. Cranking up the queue depth to eight allows for more data throughput, but it really only benefits the thumb drive, which has plenty of gas in the tank to take advantage of it. The SATA USD is getting really close to its limit, which is just over 600 megabytes per second, but the USB adapter is also probably bottleneck here. Switching over to the random test with a queue depth of 1, the USB stick is still really fast, especially in writes. It's actually twice as fast as the SATA SSD and nearly 10 times as fast as the SD cards. When the queue depth is raised to 32, the SATA drive actually takes the lead, but the SD cards are still much, much slower. Except in that last Crystal Disk Mark test, the Pro Elite V3 really has no equal in the world of external storage unless you're comparing this against a similar USB drive, or a Thunderbolt powered drive. This thing is really fast. Like, it's gonna be a while before there's an SD card that's able to beat this thing, and a SATA to USB SSD is probably never going to be able to beat it. It's just too fast. In respect to size, this is pretty much the smallest thing you can get for external storage uh, outside of an SD card. Um, pretty much all other external storage devices are gonna be larger than this. Uh, most mainstream hard drives and SSDs, yeah, even SSDs, they're gonna be bigger than this because they tend to come in these uh, larger external chassis that require a separate cable, like I mentioned earlier. If you're talking about Thunderbolt storage, they pretty much almost always require a chassis. Sometimes as one, uh, one as large as like a, a, an eGPU chassis, uh, just to make sure that it's cooled and everything. Now, obviously, if you need external storage, but you don't need it to be that portable, that's really not going to matter too much to you. But again, I am pretty impressed that PMY was able to get this and this form factor. It's, it's small. Now, the conversation around bang for buck is a little bit complicated because $84 for a terabyte isn't great, but you really have to consider the size, the speed, and the capacity all at once. Uh, I could not find anything like this for $84. If I wanted something for cheaper, it was either going to be a lot bigger or the speed was like cut in half, like 500 megabytes per second, which is a lot slower. Uh, obviously, I couldn't have tested any of those. I didn't buy any for this, but presumably it would have been significantly slower, at least in something like Crystal Disk Mark. So when you consider the whole of this thing, if you need something like this, yeah, it's almost like unique at least for the price point. It's it's a great price point if you need a thumb drive that's really fast and really big. Now there are plenty of Thunderbolt powered drives out there that are faster, uh, but like I said, you know, they're more expensive and they're larger. Of course, the whole tariff situation in the US might make any discussion on price and value pretty meaningless even like a week from here, but uh, at least for the time being, PNY's got a very high value USB stick. The only thing I can really think of that PNY missed here was an IP65 certification for waterproofing and durability, but PNY does have a different external drive, the RP60, that does have that, and it's about the same price, and I believe it's about the same performance as well, at least on paper. Uh, so if you need that, you can go get that. Uh, they might not have made this IP65 uh, because it might have been impossible, because as you can see, it has this. Uh, that might have precluded it from being IP65 rated. Anyways, for all those reasons, we give PNY's new thumb drive a thumbs up. Uh, it should be good for pretty much anything, uh pretty much anything, honestly. Desktops, laptops, consoles, maybe even the new Switch 2 because it has the USB port on the top so you could have it on your table or desk or whatever, plug it into the top and well, I mean, it should work. And personally, I might replace all my SATA SSDs and stuff with this, or at least the high capacity one. I, I have a one terabyte BX500 and uh, I didn't even throw it into the performance results because 
it is so insanely slow. This thing is fast. Anyways, that's all I have to say about this USB stick. If you enjoyed our review and analysis, then please like the video, comment, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get notified the next time we upload. If you really enjoy what SI does and you want to support us even further, then please consider donating to our Patreon. Uh, we've been doing this for free since we launched last year. That's been the situation, and uh, it would be nice if we had a, a little bit of a revenue stream so that we don't go bankrupt. That would be nice. So if you can help out with that, then we really welcome it. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.